Yo, what's up everybody? In this video, we're going to do another example in finding the cash flow from assets to bondholders and to shareholders given all this information about a company. And as you can see, lots of information given in this example. And in case you don't want to write it out, I put a link to lecture notes in the description box below that has this example already written out for you. So you may want to print those out before continuing this video. And as far as the information goes, we're given a bunch of items from both an income statement and a balance sheet for two years, 2015, 2016. And as I mentioned in previous examples, the first thing you want to do when you get a bunch of information like this is try to organize organize them into financial statements. So let's start off with making the income statement for both years 2015, 2016 side by side. And so far I've made it up to the earnings before interest and taxes line. And as you can see over there, I put a star beside the items that I've organized so far. So we start off with our sales. Then from our sales, we would subtract our cost of sales or our cost of goods sold. Then we would take out depreciation, and then the other expenses we also subtract. And then netting out those numbers, we would get to our earnings before interest and taxes figure, which is 29,000 for 2015 and 34,000 for 2016. Next, we would subtract interest from the earnings before interest and taxes of 4,000 and 5,000 respectively to get to our taxable income of 25,000 for 2015 and 29,000 for 2016. Next expense is taxes. And the way we calculate taxes is we take our tax rate of 35%, change it to a decimal form and then multiply it by that taxable income. So for example, in 2015, 25,000 times 0.35 gives us 8,750. And then in 2016, our taxable income of 29,000, we multiply by 0.35 to get 10,150 to get the taxes for that year. And then subtracting the taxes from taxable income, we get our final net income figure. So we get 16,250 for 2015 and then 18,850 for 2016. And as we've mentioned before, a portion of net income gets paid out as dividends to shareholders, and then the other portion gets retained in the company as retained earnings. And whenever you're doing a question like this, if possible, you always wanna to try to figure out what that proportion of net income is. And in this case, luckily it is possible with the information we're given because we're given the actual dividend figures for both 2015 and 2016. So I wrote those down here. And then from that, we can easily calculate the retained earnings figure by just subtracting the two numbers. So for example, in 2016, the company made $18,850 worth of net income, 10,000 of that got paid out as dividends, and then 8,850 of that net income was retained in the company and went into retained earnings. Next, let's get into making the balance sheet. And the first thing you wanna do with a balance sheet is organize the current assets section of it. So we got cash, accounts receivable, and inventory. Those figures were given in the original example, and those are all current assets. So we list them out for both years, 2015, 2016, and we get a total current assets amount of 165,000 for 2015 and 190,000 for 2016. And then after current assets, we have our net fixed assets, which are like long-term assets. And then we add the current assets to the net fixed assets and we get our total assets figure. So for 2015, it was 465,000. For 2016, it was 520,000. Next, we have to organize the liability section of the balance sheet. So you start off with current liabilities and accounts payable and short-term payables go under current liabilities. So we end up getting 43,000 for 2015 and 47,000 for 2016. And then adding the long-term debt, we end up getting our total liabilities for both years respectively of 163,000 and 197,000. And once we have the total assets figure and the total liabilities figure, we could subtract the two and get our total equity figure for each year to balance both sides. So 302,000 worth of total equity in 2015 and 323,000 of total equity in 2016 when we add those to liabilities, we get total liabilities and equity balancing out with the total assets on the left side. 
So finally, we have our income statement and balance sheet with the previous information that we were given. And you may be asking yourself, do you have to actually do all of this work to find the cash flow from assets to shareholders to bondholders? And the answer is unfortunately yes, because you're going to need certain figures from these financial statements to make those calculations. So for example, you're going to need these retain earnings figures. And the only way you were able to get that is if you calculated net income, if you went through all of this. And you need retain earnings when you're calculating cash flow to shareholders, for example. Or you need this tax amount when you're calculating operating cash flow. So my suggestion is as time goes by, you'll get better at it and you'll get faster, but you have to organize information into proper financial statements. So now let's get into finding what we're actually asked to find. So the first thing is cash flow from assets, and we know cash flow from assets is equal to operating cash flow minus net capital spending minus change in networking capital. Now operating cash flow we know is equal to earnings before interest and taxes plus depreciation minus taxes. And since we're asked in the original question to find the cash flow from assets in 2016, we would pull these figures for the operating cash flow from the 2016 income statement. So the earnings before interest and taxes we got here of 34,000, depreciation of 11,000, and then taxes of 10,150, and we get our total operating cash flow being 34,850 in 2016. Next, we have to figure out the net capital spending, and we know that the net capital spending is equal to the ending fixed assets minus the beginning fixed assets plus the depreciation. And again, since we're finding this for cash flow from assets in 2016, we would assume that the beginning fixed assets in 2016 is like the same as the ending fixed assets of 2015. So our beginning fixed assets figure would be 300,000 and our ending figure would be 330,000. We're just assuming that these balance sheets are December 31st, 2015 and on December 31st, 2016. So plugging all those numbers in, we end up getting a final amount of 41,000 for net capital spending. And remember depreciation we got from the 2016 income statement. Next, we have to find the change in networking capital. And to do that, we have to find the networking capital in 2015 and the networking capital in 2016 and then take the difference between them. And networking capital, we know, is current assets minus current liabilities and those figures we can get from the balance sheet. So to get networking capital for 2015, we would take the current assets from 2015 of 165,000 and then subtract the current liabilities of 43,000 to get a networking capital of 122,000. And then similarly for 2016, we would take the current assets of 190,000 and subtract the current liabilities of 47,000 to get networking capital for 2016 of 143,000. So to get the change in networking capital, we would take the 2016 amount and subtract the 2015 amount to get a final figure of 21,000 for the change in networking capital. So then inputting that here into the general formula for the cash flow from assets, we can now net all these numbers out. So we could take the operating cash flow, subtract the net capital spending and subtract the change in networking capital to get a final amount of negative 27,150 for the cash flow from assets in 2016. So that there is our answer for the first part. So that answer I'll put up here just so we have for reference. And now let's move on to the second part. So the cash flow to bondholders in 2016 is equal to the interest minus the net new borrowing. And then this net new borrowing is basically the change in the long-term debt. So we can further expand net new borrowing into ending long-term debt minus the beginning long-term debt. And these figures we can get from the balance sheet. So the ending long-term debt at the end of 2016 was 150,000. Subtracting the long-term debt at the beginning of 2016 or at the end of 2015, because remember these balance sheet figures are at the end of the year. So then we would have 5,000 of interest, which we got from the 2016 income statement, subtract, and then the net of these, the long-term debt went up by 30,000. So we borrowed 30,000 more from the bondholders. So we would end up with 5,000 minus 30,000 in the brackets to get a final figure of negative 25,000 for the cash flow to bondholders in the year 2016.
So that cash total bondholders figure I put up here for reference. And now let's find our final item, which is cash flow to shareholders in 2016. And cash flow to shareholders is equal to dividends minus net new equity issued. Now, technically, we can find the cash flow to shareholders in a much easier way, because if you remember the general formula, it basically states that the cash flow from assets equals the cash flow to bondholders plus the cash flow to shareholders. And because we have two out of those three figures, we can find the cash flow to shareholders much easier. However, let's do it the more legit way. Let's uh, go through this process to really see if we got our financial statements correct. And then at the end, we can see whether our three cash flows hold out in the general formula. So the dividends we were given in the question, they are $10,000 in 2016. So we could just put that figure there. And now this net new equity issued part is a little tricky. And you gotta be careful because what a lot of students like to do is they think that net new equity issued is just the change in total equity. So sometimes they'll just take this 323,000 minus this 302,000 and then that change they'll put here. But that would be incorrect because as we've mentioned before, the equity portion of a balance sheet is comprised of two things. It's comprised of the accumulated retained earnings and the common stock of the company. And net new equity issued is basically the change in common stock, that common stock portion of the equity section. It's not the overall change in equity because equity is comprised of two parts. It's just the change in that one part of common stock. So basically another phrase for net new equity issued is change in common stock. And you may want to write that down as reference. And we could find the change in common stock because we know the change in equity is basically equal to the retained earnings that happened throughout the year plus the change in common stock. So the change in equity we could find from the balance sheet is basically how much did the equity change. So it went from 302,000 to 323,000. Subtracting those figures, it basically went up by 21,000. That's equal to the retained earnings, which we can get from here. It's 8,850 plus the change in common stock, which is what we are solving for. So we could put a X there. So then solving for the variable X, we get 12,150. So then taking that 12,150 change in common stock amount and putting it into the cash flow to shareholders formula, we got the dividends of $10,000 that the shareholders are getting, but then they have to give 12,150 more dollars to the company. So their net Cash flow is negative $2,150. So then taking that amount and putting it here, we have all three things figured out. The cash flow from assets, cash flow to bondholders, and cash flow to shareholders. And as I mentioned, we can always check our answer with the general formula. So cash flow from assets has to equal cash flow to bondholders plus cash flow to shareholders. And our cash flow from assets, we uh, calculate it as negative $27,150. Cash flow to bondholders was negative $25,000. And then cash flow to shareholders was also a negative number, so negative $2,150. And then if you take negative $25,000 plus negative $2,150, you get a amount of negative 27,150 and notice how both sides equal so we can be pretty confident that we got the right answer. Now one more point I want to make before finishing off this video is notice how the cash flow from assets is a negative number and usually up until this point we've been getting positive numbers and all a negative number means is if you remember the formula cash flow from assets is equal to the operating cash flow minus the net capital spending minus the change in networking capital and basically our operations or our operating cash flow was not enough money to finance our net capital spending. So notice how our net fixed assets went up by a lot. And it wasn't enough to finance our change in networking capital. Our networking capital went up as well from 2015 to 2016. So because the operating cash flow was not enough money to finance the net capital spending and the change in networking capital, we end up with a negative number or a negative cash flow from assets. So to finance that negative cash flow from assets, we have to go to bondholders and we have to go to shareholders and take more money from them. So we went to bondholders, took on more debt, 
and we went to cat, uh, shareholders and issued more equity and got more money from them as well. And then taking that money from the bondholders and the shareholders, we were able to finance that net negative amount from assets. Yo, what's up guys? Thanks for checking out my channel. Hopefully you got some value from the video you just watched. If you did get some value, big favor to ask you, please like this video and subscribe to the channel. Any questions, any recommendations on things you'd like to see, please leave it in the comments section. Also check out the description box below for links to material and content related to the video you just watched. Peace out.